As Buffett says, when the tide goes out, you find out who's swimming naked. There are a lot of ugly naked bodies in the credit system, in my view, uh, in Europe. We're having the longest economic expansion since the Civil War. Uh, the predecessor long expansion was exactly 120 months. It was March of 1991 to March 2001. Uh, we're going to pass through that. We had monetary policy all by itself, but now you have a big boost from fiscal policy and also a new regulatory regime that came in with, uh, which is more pro-business, that came in with President Trump and also with uh, the Republican Senate. Uh, so I would expect this to be prolonged. Uh, perhaps all the way through next year, we'll see. Uh, but there are some risks with this because you have, of course, a hyper-leveraged government right now, or more leveraged. It was hyper-leveraged before. They're going to issue another trillion, $300, $300 billion in bonds next year at a time when the Fed, one of the buyers, is withdrawing from doing that. They're shrinking their balance sheet. And so I can see some real pressures coming from uh, higher interest rates. So that's one thing I think will be a bit of a retardant. We'll have to see how strong the underlying economy is. We do have, of course, trade frictions and we have other issues of pinpricks in the system, uh, leveraged loans and corporate debt, and a little bit of weakness now in the auto sector, uh, the housing sector. But in the end, <clears throat> you run out of speed on a business cycle, you begin to slow down. The issue is what happens when things slow down. And when that occurs, and I know not when, and no one can forecast with specificity, the Fed will need to be able to cut rates, and if needed, then expand their balance sheet if that isn't enough. So I think what the Fed wants here is uh, to put some nuts in the tree. And what I mean by that is have some rate increases without disrubing the economy, but keep going as far as they can before it creates too much friction at the risk of tipping the economy over, which they have a record of doing in 10 or 13 tightening cycles before this one. I don't see going into a negative pattern. It's a question of we have had very robust growth and how far you slow down. If we were to slow down to 2% from the current run rate, which is much higher, I wouldn't, to me, that's a natural phenomenon. Uh, what you want to do is make sure that you don't start cascading downward, go into negative territory, contract the economy, lay people off in jobs when economies contract and create the kind of frictions and problems that a real recession creates. So we run that risk. I don't think that's the issue in the intermediate term. We do have business cycles. God hasn't conquered the business cycle. Uh, President Trump hasn't conquered the business cycle. And it's hard for the Fed to conquer a business cycle, but they can at least try to smooth it out as they go through time. There are some other things outside of the country that could come to infect us. I'm especially worried about Europe. I think the European Central Bank has conducted a policy that uh, has hidden some really bad credits, not just in Italy, but elsewhere. If I come to you and say, I'm going to lend you money, and by the way, I'm going to pay you to take it, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to stretch out on your risk spectrum, and you're going to uh, make some bad decisions. That's human nature. It's not quantifiable. It's just human nature. And as Buffett says, when the tide goes out, you find out who's swimming naked. There are a lot of ugly naked bodies in the credit system, in my view, uh, in Europe, in the ECB sphere. Now, the euro pool is the big pool, along with the U.S. dollar, second biggest pool of credits uh, in the world. It's, it's the key currency other than the dollar, which is the key currency, the prime currency. So if you have disruption in that sphere, and given that it's a, a huge market for the United States, uh, altogether the largest uh, market that we sell into in terms of our exports, that could, I could see that coming back to infect us and creating systemic risk. So that's my biggest fear right now. It is not China. China doesn't have an open capital account like what we do with, in the case of the Europeans. Uh, and it's not the Euro uh, emerging markets because emerging markets are emerging markets. We know Argentina is going to do the same thing repeatedly in South Africa and Indonesia and uh, Turkey, etc. Um, I don't see that infecting us. But I can see potential problems in Europe. And that's a big pool, it's an important place, and it could be a systemic risk. 
So the biggest long-term threat I see to the U.S. economy is our horrifically bad primary and secondary education system. If we can't graduate high school kids uh, that can read and write, that can do four-function math, that understand the nature of the world we live in, uh, imagine how we're going to compete against this enormous surge of STEM students in China who work hard and are incented to work hard or elsewhere in the world. You know, we always lagged in mathematics, for example, against the Russians and so on. This is serious right now because we have a massive population base in China. There's an emphasis on education. And uh, I remember going to, with the delegation that was sent by Jimmy Carter to meet with Deng Xiaoping in 1978-79. We concluded that treaty uh, on March 3rd in 1979. Uh, there was no education system at all. It was all malthought. And by the way, there were no cars in China. There were 2,000 cars in all of China when we were there. They're the biggest auto industry in the world right now, but importantly, they have re-emphasized education as a way to grow up your income, escape the middle income trap. We almost de-emphasize it. And we talk about it a lot, but we don't do anything about it. In the end, it really comes back to families and what kind of incentives they, they give and what kind of cultural incentives we have. And we're seeing other cultures, China is probably the most glaring example, where you know, there's an emphasis here. It's value. It's part of your sense of self to be well educated and to study hard and to work hard. Uh, that's a major shift. And it's the further along we get without having that become part of our cultural ethic, uh, it, the harder it is to correct but it is, to me, the number one problem long-term for our country.